All right, huge movie fanatic Nate coming back with another solo review of, of a winter-themed solo review movie fest. I just reviewed, uh, the last review I did was K2, and I think it, it's, it's kind of, I want to follow it up with, a re with the review of this movie, which is uh, Vertical Limit that came out, I think, in 2000. And this is directed by uh, a guy that I really like who did a couple of movies that I really thought were kind of cool, which were uh, GoldenEye, and then he rebooted, he rebooted, he rebooted, he re Hi. He rebooted Bond, rebooted Bond twice. He did Goldeneye, and then he did Casino Royale, which is f fantastic. And Martin Campbell. And uh, Matt, he did that Zorro movie, too. I can't remember which one was the first one, because I think they did two. But it might have been Mask of Zorro or whatever. So back in the day, late 90s, uh, he was doing you know some great stuff. And then he ended up like in the late Zeros, uh, first decade of the 21st century ended up doing, which I thought was fantastic, uh, you know, Casino Royale, and this, you know, this should be better than it is, and I'm kind of disappointed with Vertical Limit. First of all, I think I was working at the video store when I, when we, this is how I originally, initially saw this, I probably just rented it from the video store, but then I, since then, you know, didn't really love it at the time, but since then have found it, I almost hesitate to say, half price books for three dollars, and, uh, you know, as you know, I, in moderation, I kind of like these survival winter, uh, you know, cold-ass movies to watch in the winter. I don't know why, just because. And so I thought, well, it's not that great, but let's just pick up Vertical Limit for $3, just because. And there's cool aspects, not a whole lot, in retro having just rewatched it, you know, a month or two, a month or so ago. Um, I'm going to go two stars for Vertical Limit. It's, it's nothing like is the greatness of K2. Now the first thing that really bugs me about the movie, the movie starts off on a, on a terribly ba bad note for me in the sense that the, the characters like the, some of the main characters and whatever happened to, I don't even, Chris O'Donnell, you know? Whatever happened, he just like he disappeared. But I respect that when people just like, they have a solid acting career and then they just whoosh, they disappear. I kind of respect that because when you have an actor that just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going, you get just like sick of seeing his face. And I, I kind of like when an actor just for whatever reason just, you know, has a really good career but just... Whoosh. I don't know if he's still doing stuff or not, but for, in my estimation, I haven't seen him around for a long time. So I think he kind of went... Whoosh, which is kind of cool. But what I was saying with getting at is the beginning starts off on a really bad note with these, these main characters like this girl and Chris O'Donnell climbing with their dad, which is a guy from Death and the Maiden, I think. He's got a name, but I can't remember it. <clears throat> and this movie starts off on a really bad note because this scene where they're climbing in, like, you know, more like an Arizona... My back. <sighs> an Arizona-ish kind of environment with just warm and dry and high and hard is a lot of green screen. And it just, you know, just a crummy way to start the movie for me because it just takes me right out of the movie before it even starts. And that loses a lot of points before it even earned any points yet. And that's, I was kind of disappointed in, in Martin Campbell for that. A lot of process photography and, and green screen stuff at the beginning of, of this movie. And then there's more throughout the movie, like visual effects to pull things off. Which, as far as I know, I didn't, I didn't mention it in the K2 review, I don't think. But as far as I know, K2, I mean, pretty much everything is real, which was freaking phenomenal. Because it was the early 90s, they really didn't do too much. They couldn't do too much trickery stuff, you know, back then like they could in 2000 and stuff. And especially now, where you can just trick everyone to death. So that started off on a real bummy point for me. And then it continued, and then, oh, they're dead. Spoiler alert, their dad died, and it's, oh, oh, another thing I wanted to say is the beginning is exactly like the beginning of Cliffhanger, which is another point, you know, point breaker, point killer, you know, it just rips off the beginning of Cliffhanger, it's not even ten years old when this movie came out, you know, it's like seven years old. So this movie rips off Cliffhanger at the beginning, and it's just like, you know, you gotta cut them loose, or, I guess it's a kind of, no, I guess it's different, I guess. A little bit, but it's mostly a rip-off of be beginning of Cliffhanger. So then the, 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 this Chris O'Donnell and his girl are siblings and brother and sister, and then after that we, we catch up with Chris O'Donnell, and 
they don't really talk much and this and that and just like all these movies like K2 some millions or billionaire guy or something wants to climb you know who has in bad health wants to go up high into the no oxygen atmosphere I don't know why this always happens in these movies but it does <clears throat> Bill Paxton, I'm not a big fan of Bill Paxton in general, but if you if you if you if you are a fan and you want to like become a non fan, watch this movie because he's just such an asshole in this movie. It's just he's one of these actors who, you know, I don't know, when you watch him you don't really know how he became an actor like why he's an actor because he's just kinda got that almost like the southern I don't know where he's from, but he's got this like he drives me crazy in Twister as well. It's just like I don't know, I can't even, I was going to try to uh, do his voice, but I can't do it. So, uh, I came back for you! <laughs> I can't remember Helen Hunt's name in the Twister. Look what's right in front of you! I'm standing here! I can't remember her name in Twister. It's me, Joe! Me! I can't do his voice. But I'm not a big fan of Bill Paxton unless he's like Hudson from, you know, Aliens or the guy from Terminator, un unnamed. <clears throat> Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean, right? This guy's a couple short mud pack, can, can short of a six pack. You're close. Give them to me. Now. Click, click, click. Fuck you, asshole. But, uh, so Vertical Limit is, is you know, then, then you know, Bill Paxson appears as this asshole rich guy, and then I kind of like, what's his name, who was, you know, Scott Glenn in this movie, who was bigger, and this is kind of during the time of his descent. But I like his character in the movie. He's like the, you know, I've done everything and chopped my feet up toes off and I've been everywhere and I know everything kind of you know one of those characters so really kind of a cool hippie kind of a character and so Scott Glenn in this I kind of like and I do like that girl from uh, who I first became aware of her from uh, End of Days she did a lot of stuff right at the end of the 90s and the beginning of the zeros and stuff like that like this other movie this other movie called Supernova or whatever <clears throat> so I like her, I mean, just in the sense that she's kind of cute, and then, I mean, Chris O'Donnell is pretty likable in general, and he's kind of cool in the movie, but the thing I don't like about it is kind of just the sense of, like, I don't know, you know that they're going to get rescued, there's really no if ands, or buts about it, so it's kind of like the suspense really isn't there, and it's just, like, contrived in this whole bullshit factor about the uh, that nitro bullshit where it's just like, oh, and it just adds that, you know that scene in Blow, uh, excuse me, Blow, is it Blow Out? No, not that, no, blow, Blown Away from 94, the Tommy Lee Jones one where the, it's like, they're coming home, the, fa the mom and daughter are coming home and it's like, turn on the stove, just this bullshit of like keeping you at the edge of your seat, that's what the nitro, like climbing the mountain with the nitro in your backpack crap, it's just like, give me a break, and why, then later on in the movie, it's like dripping in the, you know, what, who, and then just blows up in the, you know, military, military facility, and it's like, what kind of sloppy nitro keeping is this? And it's just like, so it has a lot of scenes in the helicopter scene, just contrived, overly done stuff that I didn't really respect. There's a fine line between like, oh man, that's cool, and just crossing the line to like, oh, that's kind of stupid, like, that's so fake, or whatever, or that's just dumb, like, so, two stars for Vertical Limit, it's, it's more just, you know, and then Bill Paxton's trapped with his, with that girl from uh, End of Days, and, and he's like, letting this other guy die, or either that, or I think he smothers him, or something, and you just, you just want to kill Bill Paxton in this movie, so, I think, you know, I don't think this movie, unfortunately, sorry, um, what's his name, Martin Campbell, it doesn't really deserve to really be talked about anymore, so I think I'm going to stop talking about it. So, two stars for, for Nate, for Vertical Limit. I mean, it's got some cool, you know, whatever, imagery, and got some, you know, cool winter snow climb set pieces, but 
most of it, a lot of it, I shouldn't say most of it, but I'll say a lot of it is like roll your eyes, give me a break kind of stuff. And obviously starting the beginning of the movie with fake green screen climbing is just points lost before they're earned. So thank you very much for watching and don't climb mountains with nitro.